I wanted to talk a little bit today about a, it's a Red Hat compatible version of Linux called Orion Lime. This is release two. This is based on RHELS 9.3. And I wanted to give you kind of a, an overview about it. I got a, an email from the team lead. And I guess it's been about a month ago now. And he asked me to take a look at it. And I thought, well, sure, why not? I mean, I, I hadn't heard of it before. So uh, I, I didn't really have enough time to do it the last few <laughs> weeks because I was working on that. Windows project, so I have some time now. So I thought, well, let's let's go let's go look at it and and see what it's all about. So, it, like I said, it's called uh, Orion Lime R2. It's based on on RHEL, but the repositories that they use is from are from Alma Linux. They have an optional FlatHub uh, add-on to it, and uh, and it has the normal Anaconda installer. It doesn't require a lot of system requirements to run it, and it includes a Firefox browser, and it has the EPL, or EPL repositories, which allows you to use non-free software. So what is the focus of Orion Lime 2, R2? Why would you use this? Well, in a word, security. That's their focus. And as a consequence of that, they also are stability because they're they're based on a long-term support release of RHEL, so which typically goes for about ten years or so uh, in their support line. So one of the differentiators, though, be, between Orion uh, Linux is that they have Docker support for containers that are pre-installed out of the box if you install the business version of the uh, desktop. So you don't have to fiddle around with going out and finding the latest Docker repos, getting them configured and installed <clears throat> and set up for uh, you, know, you to be able to use. They're already there and ready to go for you. So the uh, it has a familiar layout if you're comparing this to other operating systems in the Linux realm that use GNOME. Uh, it has moderate customization. They they also include the Neovo and AMD, also the Intel drivers for your graphics card out of the box. Now, if you want NVIDIA's non-free uh, drivers, you have to install those yourself. But, you know, there's a package for that. So it does have full UEFI support, and it also supports... Uh, a BIOS legacy environment as well. So if your machine, if if you, it's your preference, right? Whether you want to support UEFI or not. Uh, the LibreOffice suite has, they have, a, there's two, there's a standard and we'll talk about that. And then the business suite, both of them are free. It just depends on what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a, a system where it's slimmed down and you get to install what you want, then the standard version is probably going to be more for you. If you want pre-installed applications that typically would be find their way into a business, then you probably want the business version. So uh, GIMP is pre-installed and so is Inkscape, Inkscape as well, which is a vector uh, graphics program. So there's, like I said, we talked about the two of them. So that currently they only support uh, Intel. Uh, so x86, 64-bit um, CPUs. They don't have support for any of the other architectures that I'm aware of. At least there isn't a download for any others that I saw. So it does, like I said, it does use Alma Linux for the base repos, and then they maintain the source repos on the Orion uh, repositories. So this release dates back to February the 18th of 2024, and it's scheduled for end of maintenance, which means that uh, enhancement source uh, will, will no longer be available after June the 1st, 2027. End of support for the release, that would be security updates, would be May the 31st, 2032. That's a long way out there. 
uh, yeah, it's. I don't know what they're going to do about the kernel, though. I I keep meaning to ask these. Maybe uh, um, maybe if they're if the uh, Orion uh, leads are watching this, maybe you can leave a comment below what your plans are because uh, the Linux kernel folks, after a certain version, are all, are not doing long term support releases of the kernel anymore. They also have uh, monthly update cycles. So the the last one was uh, April the 27th, and that is currently in support. The uh, the others have, they I think they want you to, to take those upgrades because a lot of them have security updates. And then some changes to the portions of Orion that pertain to security would be in 9.3, Red Hat introduced something called Keyline, that is a remote machine attestation tool. So it's a means of identifying that a remote host that's coming into your network to be attached to your servers can present keys that are stored in the TPM 2.0 chip. And your your there's two parts to it, and we'll kind of go through that in a minute. So, uh, and that will then determine whether that machine is who they say they are based on the keys they present. So, yeah, there's two parts to it. So all of your remote machines have to have uh, the Keyline agent installed, and then the servers have to have the Keyline registrar in installed on them. So the remote machines can be IoT or Edge or even other machines in an external data center. Is fine. They use the internet to present this, and, and it's all encrypted. Uh, also, any communication back and forth between the on-premise servers and the remote servers is encrypted as well. So I did. <laughs> I think the uh, I think what the direction that going is good. It's uh, it is it has a security focus to it. It's it's driving into the space where we have. A tip, you know, real life connections to external machines, whether they be permanent machines or temporary, because you have employees traveling that need remote access, or you have home workers that need remote access. But these are all real world things that we've been having to deal with since the C things started. So, um, and and. Um, and it also has taught us to be more careful and more dil diligent about our remote connections. So, I mean, the, the direction that that release has taken, good, excellent. And of course, you know, that's driven in part by Red Hat's efforts as well. As far as Orin, uh, Orin uh, Lime, Lime Linux R2 is concerned, I would say go out and try it. I probably would start with the standard version and just install under that. But all in all, um, it's a it's it is a it it of the rel releases it is the fastest. So I wanted to explain a couple of things about this. So first of all, the on the Fedora Intel right here, that me that means that's not my laptop. That's the VM. But I wanted to differentiate it between this Fedora and this Fedora, which is running under Asahi Linux on a Mac Mini. So this is a Mac Mini M1 down here. All of these are running on a virtual machine, the same virtual machine Proxmox that we were just looking at. There were some issues with Fedora 40 that I hadn't seen before. The first time, if you remember, when I benchmarked this uh, on the release, everything worked fine. But... Now, all of a sudden, it's, it actually crashed. Uh, it actually crashed KWIN. So, yeah. and that was during the Blender benchmark. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with it. Obviously, there's some patching things that are introducing bugs. Asahi Fedora 40 is screaming. It, it has even picked up more speed since the last time I looked at it. So the this team is doing some amazing things with that's still the M1. I didn't change hardware. <laughs> that's still the M1. 
And, and you, if you don't believe me, you can go look at the, uh, in the benchmark results, it tells you what hardware this is running on. These are all virtual machines. So um, Orion Linux does really well in comparison to even Fedora. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, but then, you know, some of them will flip like uh, uh, in the results of all the tests, this one came out on top for the VM, whereas Asahi came out first overall, and and it isn't even close. <laughs> it's not even close. Um, so this team down, this team right here is just crushing it. They're absolutely crushing it. Yeah, you can see the common kernel benchmark. Although, yeah, these are the stress ones. So I would be careful with this because not all the results posted. The, res the result is, if you can see here, it's exactly the same. So this might be incorporating um, the stress, the kernel benchmark. So, yeah, take these with a grain of salt. Uh, and as a result of that, the overall winner is Asahi Linux. Even though I don't necessarily, I would almost, this I believe. Yeah, I, this I believe. It's this one that I don't believe, the Fedora 40 one. So, but it it's inconsequential because the number of first place finishes goes Asahi, Orion, then Red Hat, and then Fedora. So Fedora is actually slowing down a little bit uh, over time. Last place uh, was a tie, it looks like. 27, 28 between Red Hat and Fedora. And then Orion, Orion 93, and then Asahi. So yeah, this is how many last place finishes those uh, distributions had on the individual tests. And with that, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video today and bye for now.